Welcome to In a Heartbeat. I am a guest host, this is Lauren Parrott, and I have the absolute privilege of interviewing Dr. Mark Petros, who not only has his own clinic in internal medicine, but he's also the chief and editor of a magazine called Doctor Magazine. So I'm thrilled to have him here. So hi, Dr. Petros. Hi, Thank Lauren. you for coming. Thank you for it's having so me. It's so nice Thanks. to see you. <laughs> so tell me, did you always know that you wanted to go into medicine? Yes, I think when I was uh, in high school, um, I was very impressed with my biology teacher. He was an inspiring teacher and uh, made things so easy and so uh, pleasurable. So you can say I fell in love with biology yeah. uh, since high school. And then I was fascinated by the field, uh, by the structure of the human body, by the, the, the anatomy of the human body. And I proceeded with, with my medical education, and that's where we are, right here. I think that's great. You know, I, I, love, I love all of that. I love biology. But I just don't think that it's in me to be a doctor, so I give you all the credit in the world. You are great in this field. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Now, I understand, though, that you worked for the BBC, is it? I true? did, I did, I did. Uh, I was in England, and uh, I was uh, taking a course in general surgery. But I had to supplement my income. Okay. So uh, since my father was a journalist, I thought, well, it's not a bad idea if I go and apply to the BBC. And I said, well, probably it's in the blood. Mm -hmm. So they accepted me, and I did some uh, medical editing and uh, uh, even newscasting for about a year and a half. So I do have some basis in, in journalism and in broadcasting. I think that's great. I, yeah. I think you definitely have the voice for it. Uh, you think so? <laughs> I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but medicine was really your passion, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, where did you go to medical school? Uh, Wayne State and uh, the training at the DMC, the Detroit Medical Center. Mm -hmm. uh, I rotated uh, at different hospitals, uh, Sinai Grace, receiving Harper Hospital, and uh, I got uh, excellent training. I, I, well, I think Wayne State University is an excellent school myself. It is. <laughs> it it is, really it is. is. It is indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I also understand that you wrote a book when you were a resident. Is that true? Correct. Here it is. Okay. Uh, the title is Wake Up to Your Body Signals. That was in, I think, 89, probably 1990. Um, you know, I, I discovered that people underestimate their symptoms. Mm -hmm. If they have a problem, they will go and ask a relative or they would ask a friend. Maybe they go to a drugstore and get some medication. Well, this is wrong. Yeah. They are taking medicine into their own hands. Right. If you have a problem, go to the doctor. And uh, so I discuss in that uh, little book, I think it's about 100, 200 pages, uh, the most common symptoms and signs that are usually neglected or underestimated by uh, by the public. Yeah. So we expanded on it, and uh, I mean, I give you a small example, a, a little one: indigestion. Uh, usually, people will go to a drugstore, take Tums, Rolaids, uh, and the problem could be a serious one, as serious as a heart attack. Oh my goodness. Yes. So don't un underestimate your symptoms and better see professional uh, uh, concerning it. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, yeah. I, I, I hear this a lot. I hear that people say, I hate going to the doctor, or I, I don't feel like going to the doctor, or I'm fine, I can deal with it myself. But I think you're absolutely right. People ignore things that could be very detrimental to Ex your health. Exactly, and they are taking chances. Mm -hmm. So. Go to the doctor and uh, discuss your problems with them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I agree, yeah. yeah. 
Now, have you written any other books? Yeah, I have written uh, another book. I wrote a manual of diagnosis. This is a, uh, a textbook, uh, 500 pages, okay. for medical students and interns. Oh. Yeah, it deals with, with symptoms. Usually patients go to doctors with symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I start analyzing the symptom, giving all the causes and uh, the tests that should be ordered to make the correct diagnosis. And then I discuss all the diseases that will cause that particular symptom. You can say it's um, the entire field of medicine in their pockets. Usually they carry it in their lab coats. Yeah. And um, it is simple and easy to read book. Well, I think that's excellent for medical students to really have an understanding from a physician who's yeah. been through it. I think that's wonderful. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So now, um, I believe you, I said in the beginning, you have a solo practice. Right. And I want to know when you decided to have a solo practice and how long you've had it. I was always in solo practice. When I finished my training, uh, I was on my own and I felt very comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, nothing against group practice, but I feel comfortable the way I give uh, medical care to my patients is on one-to-one -one basis yes. and patients feel comfortable with this uh, so do I and uh, it had worked very well for me it has its disadvantages but uh, um, in general I'm very happy with it now tell me what <clears throat> the disadvantages are well, you can't leave the practice for too long. I can't take long vacations. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, but in everything, there's good and bad in it. But sure. I'm happy with the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stay in it. Well, I had the, the opportunity. I, I was very privileged because I was able to come to your office and see how it is. I took some pictures. Yes. And the first thing that I noticed was that it just is very comfortable. I mean, on the screen right now, we can see your office, and everything yep. is just very neat and tidy. I felt very comfortable when I came in. I felt very comfortable talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. And Thank I, you. Well, I, I thought <laughs> sometimes I, I get intimidated, you know, when I see, like, lab coats yes. or different things like that. But coming into your office... This image right here is the first thing you see. It's like you're walking into someone's kitchen. Exactly, and you're that's what you see. Me, no lab coat, no yeah. white coat. Yeah. Yeah, shirt and a tie. Right. And, uh, you know, make them feel comfortable. And uh, after all, uh, practicing medicine is, uh, you know, take care of patients and mm -hmm. their problems. Absolutely. <clears throat> And I see this is one of the rooms that patients go into. Yes, this is an examining room. Okay. Yeah, one of the examining rooms. I have two rooms. Two rooms. Yes, it's a small practice. Uh -huh. I don't see more than 10 patients a day. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I teach also medical students and interns. So we take time. Yeah. So I don't have time between teaching and, and seeing the patient, discussing their problems. You can see more than maximum 10 patients a day. So I give good attention to each individual yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, patient. But and I think that's so important because you really know your patients on an individual basis. So, I absolutely. mean, I feel like if you were my doctor, I feel I would feel very comfortable knowing that that you really do know everything that's going on. Lauren, now it's about time to switch your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I should. <laughs> no kidding. Yes, stay with him. <laughs> yeah. No, I I want to hear more about. You said it. You teach. Uh, you teach. Um, Medical students. Medical students, yeah. yeah, and residents, and I give lectures at local hospitals uh, in Detroit. Um, and I have been doing this for about uh, 15, 16 years, I think. Um, and it, it, it's good, it's, 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 it's challenging. You know, uh, students will ask you different questions, and you have to be on, on top of your, on the game. To, yeah. yeah. So it, I like it, I like to teach. Well, from what I have yeah. heard, yes. patients, I'm sorry, well, patients too, but uh, students love you because you received an award, is that correct? Correct. And yeah. what was the award given to you for? It's, uh, it's a Best Teacher Award. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, by residents. You have the... It's on the screen right now. It's on the right screen, now. Yeah. right. 
Yeah. Um, thing is, I make things very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the convoluted uh, medicine is hard field. Yeah. Uh, so I make it very simple for them to understand and comprehend. And they like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I, I don't know, I, I just think <clears throat> that that the way that you talk to people, I, I mean, it's very obvious that you make people feel comfortable. I think the patients yeah. appreciate that, and obviously, it's, it's students, you know, they voted you number one teacher. I think that... Yeah, they that, tell me this, yeah. That goes yeah. to show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I would like to talk about the magazine yes. that you're the chief and editor for. Yes, yes, it's yes. It's called Dr. Magazine. Yes. And I, you can <clears throat> see it on the screen here. Mm -hmm. And the first That's the second edition. That's the second, the second edition. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the second uh, issue. The second issue. Right, right. Okay, but I want to know where did this idea come from to publish yeah. a magazine? Yeah. You know, we just talked about it. I was teaching and uh, for years. And uh, I thought if I can disseminate this medical information and educate as many people as we can, uh, so I came up with this idea and uh, I talked to my daughter who helps in, uh, in some research and uh, the design of the magazine. So we gave it a shot and uh, that's what we had, two issues. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we just want to improve, uh, help uh, patients and the public and people improve on their health and uh, uh, their living and uh, and uh, especially when it comes to prevention of diseases, I right. think that's essential and it's very, very important. Would you say, is that the goal of your magazine? Yes, yeah. To, uh, it, it says, doctor, your path to wellness. Mm -hmm. So basically to give them the most current medical information, the latest in, in technology, breakthrough procedures, uh, new drugs that come out, we inform them with the latest, really, in medicine. Yeah. And it covers all fields of medicine, whether psychiatry, uh, psychology, pediatric surgery, gynecology, uh, cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, all fields of medicine. Yeah. Yeah. We want them to know uh, more about medicine. Now, when I go into the doctor's office, yes. there are like a million magazines mm -hmm. there. and. There's a handful of different kinds of health-related magazines. Yes. Now, if I am just a regular person in the doctor's office, why should I pick up Dr. Magazine? You better pick up my magazine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you why. Really, the features that distinguish my magazine from other magazines are three. Okay. One is the content. I cover a wide range of uh, medical conditions and diseases. Uh, if you compare it to other m publications, usually they are good, but they are restricted to certain subjects. For instance, they stress a lot on obesity and maybe nutrition. Uh, this magazine, uh, as I said, covers a wide range of subjects, uh, and uh, this is one as far as the content. Second is the style. It's easy to read, easy to comprehend. And after all, it is fun, yeah. fun to read. And the third is the design. It's usually, uh, I would say, attractive and visually appealing. Yes. So it will stick in your mind, and usually that design will summarize the whole idea of that article. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have these three features that will distinguish my magazine from the others, from the yes. rest. Well, the <clears> other <throat> thing that I noticed when I first looked at Dr. Magazine is that it's larger than a regular magazine. It's, I mean, the size is big, but it's yes. bigger. Yes. And so it stands out from, from other magazines, but the pictures are just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. They're Thank so you. nice. Thank you. And yeah, I, I know that's one Thanks. thing. The, there were a couple of things that really attracted me to the magazine. I, I thought that the pictures are just very appealing. And also, I like you had mentioned, everything is very easy to read. Easy to read, yeah. yes. Yeah, and it, yeah, I think what you've done is, is you've taken really complicated issues and you've put them into layman's terms. Exactly. Yeah. Bring medicine from the ivory tower to the 
real ordinary men and women on the street and right. let them know what uh, you know uh, medicine is and simplify it right. basically that's what it is and this is the message I want to deliver to uh, to my readers yes yeah yeah well, I think it comes across that way it really does and I hope so yeah I yeah. think so yeah now at one at what point do you think that you've reached the success level that that you were aiming for with this magazine with this magazine I don't think anybody can reach uh, that comfort zone uh, you have always uh, challenges and you want to improve and and give uh, more and better yeah. so I don't think I will be ever be satisfied with what I have now sure. I always thrive for better and to give uh, more to the public mm -hmm. so there is no that comfort zone unfortunately Lauren <laughs> Well, I, I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, another thing that I've noticed about about you and yes. your practice is that I feel like <clears throat> this magazine is very, it's like a family business. Can you talk about, I know I've met your your wife and yes. your daughter, Natasha. Yes. And how, how do you all work together to make this magazine come to life? Unfortunately, we do work together and we work, uh, you know, in harmony, <laughs> but we do. And uh, Natasha helps with the design, uh, my wife with research, and uh, I write almost all the subjects, but we do have writers with us, and uh, I can give them the idea of the, of the article and they can expand on it, mm -hmm. and because it's about... Uh, a hundred page uh, uh, magazine I can't write them from cover to cover right so we need other people with us but they all help in order to give uh, a good product as uh, as you can see and I think it's something very I think it will be uh, a success yeah I absolutely think. yeah mm. well even I mean like I said if I was in the doctor's office I I would certainly pick up the magazine simply because of the pictures you know and then then once I open it up you know then I start reading the articles they're easy to understand yes and they're interesting too they're timely and they're interesting yeah, a wide variety of subjects fun uh, I mean we cover all fields and uh, uh, it, it is a pleasurable experience really I, I, I meant it to be that way mm -hmm. yeah well, Dr. Petros, I would like to thank you so much for coming on in a heartbeat here at the Gross Point War Memorial. And I, I wish you a lot of luck with the magazine. I, I really hope that it's able to be in several, several doc doctor's offices all over the world. Thank you, Lauren, for this opportunity to present it to, the, to your uh, audience. Of course, yeah. it was it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for thank coming. You. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> and thank you for tuning into In a Heartbeat. And if you, if you would like more information about Dr. Petros or internal medicine or Doctor Magazine, you can call us at eight eight one seven five one one. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on In a Heartbeat.